Um, so yes, May, thanks for joining us. And uh, I know yeah. we're behind schedule, so just take your time and uh, we can always catch up during the break. So take it away. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And welcome to this session on GitOps being a wealth of opportunity, both from the practice itself and also from a practitioner's career standpoint, just like mine. I hope you guys can all hear me okay, see my slides okay. My yeah. GitOps journey, awesome. My GitOps journey started back in 2019 at my prior employer, which happened to be a large insurance company based in North America. So I'm not, I, I won't be able to cover how it all started and, until I first start out with the GitOps pitch. And there's, there's two sides to this. There's the how, where, when, who pitched GitOps to you. And the other side is how did you get the green light for GitOps to be the way in a large enterprise like where, you, where I used to work for. So um, this is thanks really to Ray's, who's gonna be speaking right after me, so I better get, get going, <laughs> and, and Nick Shine for pitching GitOps to me and my team back in February of 2019. The other side of the pitch, as I was saying, how do you get the green light in a large organization? Um, four things, number one, it's really getting the buy-in. So my team and I quickly proved it out and quickly saw the vast amount of benefits that we would get making GitOps the way to do continuous deployment, continuous delivery, and generally our release, our, our new norm for a release process in a large enterprise. And so it, it needed obviously a buy-in from our immediate leadership. And at the time I was in a department that took care of cross-cutting devops -y concerns. So it was a no-brainer that, yes, we're going to do GitOps. Second is getting the buy-in from change management. And really, that's a fundamental piece because as soon as, as they were on board, and it took a lot of education and really showing firsthand, like, how do developers use this tooling? How how are these target environments evolved over the years that has rendered some of these compliance steps no longer necessary. And then, so change management, as soon as we got their buy-in, the additional buy-in from this large enterprise, right, for it to be green-lighted was a lot easier. With change management on board, getting the audit area, the audit department on board was a lot easier. And then the last and certainly not the least was our risk and compliance department. So with everyone on board, we knew we can, we can, and we can accomplish GitOps at this large enterprise. Two main factors, I think I, touch, I touched on this already, the nature of your target environment rendered a lot of the prior compliance requirements, dec decades worth of compliance stuff no longer necessary, especially if you're going in a public cloud where a lot of things are really ephemeral. Um, another is the frequency of changes, right? And what I mean by changes it could be a line of code, it could be config, it could be hardware, no matter what it is, that change before it gets realized to production has now been dramatically increased. Like we would be releasing volumes and volumes of changes because from the code change all the way to it getting realized in production has been cut down into minutes, if not shorter. So let me just talk about the ingredients because we're all talking about SBOM or software bill of materials nowadays. I'm like, oh, I'm going to call this ingredients. This is, these are the ingredients of our GitOps solution stack. And I categorize this into two, and I didn't name them. I don't know why, but this, the top part is really focused on the solutioning aspect of it. And the bottom part covers the experience, the focus on the interactions, the dialogue, and how do we how do we help our customers adopt GitOps in our enterprise? So quickly on the solutioning side, we obviously have Git. I mean, yes, you can use other versioned solution storage, but let's face it, you're better off just using Git. And then Terraform, together with scheduled pipelines, are the two solutions in this stack that really helped us accomplish the lockdown nature of the config repos. It, I know there's, there's a camp of, I don't want too many repositories, but really if that stood up through automation and you follow convention, it's not a big deal. So we were able to use Terraform. There were a few null resources. 
and scheduled pipelines to reinforce how we want each of these configure repos to be stood up and configured. Who are the collaborators in each of these configure repos? Flux, of course, set the bar on the how do you do GitOps. Flux, which we all know is made up of a lot of controllers behind the scenes that really has set the standard on how GitOps is to be practiced, especially in Kubernetes. Another ingredient is telemetry. That is super important, right? As every step in your supply chain emits important events, and in a large enterprise that's heavily regulated, those events, it's very important that those get captured. So at the end, it increases the confidence and actually paved the way to potentially not require a human approval if all of these events have checked off and have been completed. Scanning, testing, all that stuff. Next is policy as code. Because we were producing multiple Terraform modules, we needed to make sure that the modules we were providing are being used the way that they should be. And policy as code has come in super handy for that. And last but not the least is alerting, making sure that, it, and it's a combination, our data point for alerting is really coming from our telemetry stuff and being reinforced by our policies. But any deviation to the norm, we need to get alerted. And that's on two aspects, both on what makes up the GitOps solution stack, but also on the consumption of what we're providing to our customers. And then again, the, the interaction, the dialogue type stuff comes with the docs that we also measure as far as which of these sections are actually being used, which one could be improved. And asking your customers to actually try it out. And we've really gotten a lot of feedback as we rolled out GitOps onto our different strategic platforms. There's training that, that has become a norm for every milestone that we achieve with GitOps. It's a given, we're gonna do a, a major training. It's topic-based. Those who are stakeholders are obviously invited and it's recorded. We have office hours scheduled, right? To help our customers and we were able to our recommendation for doing an office hour is number one, have a sign up sheet, just so you know what is the nature of their asks. And for that, we were able to divide and conquer as far as are you asking GitOps for one platform over the other, or are you asking foundational stuff? And we started out with a team of three, the GitOps platform team, and um, we, we ended up being five, six at one point, but anyhow, we were able to divide and conquer based on the need of who is, has signed up for our office hour. We have our chat channel uh, where we immediately ask, answer questions and we go through a rotation as well as who's in charge of making sure all those questions are addressed. And last but certainly not the least, swag. You can't go wrong with the swag like a GitOps um, t-shirt or a GitOps sticker and even badge. As you provide training and preferably a self-paced training, it's important to actually start handing out those badges that folks are up to speed on how to get ops. So those are the ingredients. I'm sure I missed some, but that's those are top of mind ingredients with this get ops solution stack. So two and a half years into, I really spent about two years doing get ops in my prior employer. And this is the result. This is super high level, but in, in, in a nutshell, right, your typical CI steps are in here. We wrote our GitOps CLI to interact with the config repo. The config repo is managed and reinforced by the combination of Terraform and those scheduled pipelines. The manager approval is necessary um, to meet compliance requirements. And as soon as that's merged onto uh, the main branch, you can rely on a deployment solution to realize that onto a target platform. And then there's a Git webhook down here that talk to our API to take care of updating an asset inventory solution that then would feed downstream for additional events. Um, what I wanna highlight here is this is enabled in all strategic platforms. And earlier, I, I, I dialed into the conversation earlier, and then there's a mix of imperative and declarative. And truth be told, the, the declarative state, we were able to achieve that with our Kubernetes platform. Um, on the other platforms though, I wanna walk through kind of like the different uh, maturity level 
we first enabled GitOps in our public cloud environment. And it's a mix of imperative and declarative using Terraform, Terraform Enterprise. Second is um, our on-prem Kubernetes, which is full um, declarative. And then the last one has actually been established the longest. So it was the toughest one to, um, to crack for lack of a better term, but we got it done by focusing on what are the pain points that the true consumers of the platform are dealing with and how do we showcase that how, how GitOps fixes all those, um, all those hiccups. That, that make realizing your changes a little a little more hiccupy in the past. So enabled in all on all strategic platforms. So that was I said I started in 2019, and November of last year is when I made a job change, and I now work for VMware. How did the opportunity came about? Well, when I when my now boss asked me if I'm ready for a change, I specifically in our many conversations I asked him why me. Like, what is it that I did recently or why me? And the answer was, I've seen a lot of what you've been sharing out on GitOps and we think we can really use your, the value that you provide, how passionate you are about it. And then now a few months after that job change, it's now a question about like from Pinky or from folks whom I've worked with in the past, do you still GitOps? And I think in the prior talk, I've said, once a practitioner, always a practitioner. So yes, I still get ops. In fact, I, I describe my job now as very similar to what I used to do in my prior employer, but now it's about helping our, my immediate VMware community of solution architects, field engineers, but also helping out our different customers. So in this next slide, I, this is taken straight from um, the cartographer um, website. And this is a teaser for Lee Kapili's um, session on the use of GitOps for Tanzu application platform. But in a nutshell, what I wanna highlight is GitOps being in this whole um, supply chain. And it's powered by cartographer, which is really how you, you create um, your supply chain with then Kubernetes. So what I want to highlight here is you have your entire cluster supply chain, right? Um, what's powering this for reading the source repo and at the same time at the end of what however many steps you have to realize change from code all the way to production, there is a source repo and there's also a GitOps config repo involved. And Flux is very much an integral piece. It's the very first step that happens. And at the end of the supply chain, your stamped out delivery is what gets pushed onto your config repo. I'm gonna show yet another um, architecture here. And this is now for multi-cluster. You could be a customer who has chosen to do purposeful clusters. And again, the pieces that I wanna highlight is Flux, reading, ingesting that source right over here, and how the GitOps config repo has really simplified multi-cluster, cross-cluster communication. And that's just, that's powered by Flux. And Flux being the first step and the very last step in the supply chain holds a very integral piece. And I remember since Vanessa was the one who introduced me, I'm so thankful for her. I remember saying in that last um, prezo about GitOps and Flux in particular, it just works. As soon as I make a code change and I'm reading through my supply chain, how far has it gotten? I know I can confidently trust that Flux has done its thing. A, a sign of a great solution is if it just works, and you actually forget about it. It gets out of the way for you to get your change out to production. But what's exciting about this, I, I'm really excited about multi-cluster lately, right? Uh, you now have dedicated clusters. One is the build cluster that knows how to turn your source into an image, a cloud native image. And then you have your different clusters dedicated for your runtime footprint. So you don't necessarily have to repeat a lot of the supply chain resources that, that were needed to take your source to an image, but really you just care about um, 
running your runtime, being able to read from a config repo, and then if you are in a heavily regulated industry, you might be needing uh, validation if your images have been signed. But beyond that, it's really about your runtime footprint. Let me now move on to the next slide. And this is just a closer look to this cluster software supply chain, okay? This is all running in Kubernetes. Again, your source goes and lives in Git. Flux takes care of ingesting that, right? Um, and as soon as that there's a change, you can introduce your testing cycle, however many levels of testing you want. It could be done by Jenkins, it could be done by whatever Git runner you want to use, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, or you can use Tekton, which is another open source tooling to be able to run your tests that you need to increase that confidence for it to move on to the next phase. And ideally, I would introduce over here, source scanning, which can be done by Gripe. And then right after that source has been scanned, it's when you move on to turning that source into your cloud native build image, which can be done by Kaneko, or really what we're um, proposing or advocating for is using build packs. Next would be image scanning. Now that you have your image, you, you then have the ability to apply conventions. And that's really about enriching your pod spec um, for things that a good example as to why would I care about enriching that pod spec is to add in hooks for runtime visibility. That's an important thing. And last but certainly not the least is your deployment. It could be a regular deployment with a replica set, or it could be a K-native deployment that can scale down all the way to zero. But that's just, I just want to share an example look of an entire cluster supply chain. All right, um, how am I doing on time? Hopefully, okay. I think you have like a couple minutes left, me. All righty, thank you. All right, now let's get to the last one. Okay, just, I'm going to summarize this. I'm going to sum this up to a GitOps practitioner's tip. GitOps is opportunity rich, but you have to take action. This is what my boss always tells me. Now that I work for a tech company, I'm like, I always think, oh, someone else will, will do this. But that's really not the mindset. You, if you're passionate about GitOps, you will take action. And there's one recent contribution I did, and that's really to, I wanted the example supply chain to automatically open up a GitHub pull request. I found a quick Tekton catalog that does that, and I was able to quickly incorporate that onto our cartographer supply chain. And I think it resonates heavily, very much with large enterprises that needed that stop for proper review. The next, next suggestion or tip that I have is, again, it goes back to the open telem telemetry, collect all that data. Every step in that supply chain is an important um, element to building that confidence and hopefully fully automated for you to be able to sign off on that change, possibly without human intervention. There's also, of course, trust but verify, and that's really via policy as code. It's one thing to provide your solution, but you have to make sure it's being used the way it's intended to. And then the last is, I, I can't stress this out enough. Use the power of our GitOps community. Now that I've gone through a job change, I now realize I'm part of lots of different communities. I was a part of the GitOps community back at my prior employer, now at VMware. And of course, having done several talks about, about GitOps, whether it's GitOps Days or GitOps Con, I realize that we are in a great community of practitioners and sharing out our different approaches to GitOps has been super helpful from the practice itself and also from a practitioner's career. I know I, I have two other friends from my prior employer that are now working for WeaveWorks, and I'm sure they have a similar um, success story as far as how GitOps has helped their careers. And that's it. The, are there any questions or anything you guys want me to clarify? That's the end of my presentation.